So this next section of the manual is talking about navigation. And of course, we talked about the value of staying put, but obviously sometimes you're going to be moving or you might need to move. But what if it just happens while you're moving that you lose your orientation or whatever? So here's, I'm going to show you two techniques that are very helpful with a compass. And the only thing you really need is one of these base plate compasses that have a bezel that turns. Okay, that's going to be important. Now you can do it without, but it's just a lot easier with this. So let's take a look at this. So we've got this uh, compass, base plate compass, turning bezel. So we've decided we're going this direction, okay? We're heading out for a little uh, walk in the woods here, or hunting party or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the, the north arrow line up with the end for north, okay? Now, if we go over here and read here, we can see that we're approximately, our bearing is approximately 60 degrees. So the opposite of that, we can just follow it down across here. And what we'll do is we'll take that opposite point and put it here. And now, we are going to, now we're going to line up the arrow with north again. And you can see the compass turned around completely, and it's giving us that direction to walk back. We walked in this direction. We changed the bevel to the opposite number, the number that's directly across on the compass, and now it's set to return home. So let's think about this a minute. Pretend we're in a grocery store, just as an illustration that will be easier to understand this. We're in the dairy aisle. We do the trick. We put it, first we find out our bearing by matching this to north. We read off that number, and then we walk to the end of the dairy aisle. Now, if we turn it, the way I said the opposite number, it's going to turn around and get us back to the exact same spot. But we don't really walk in straight lines when we're doing things. There's something called lateral shift. In other words, you've gone down the dairy aisle. Most likely, you're going to go to a different aisle to come back. So let's say we go three aisles down to the bread aisle. Well, we can still use this to get back to the front of the store, but we won't be in the exact same spot. Okay, now... There's no problem in a grocery store because everything's so close together. You're going to, you know, you can figure out, oh, there's a dairy hour right there, or I'm only three away. But uh, it's still going to get you towards a general direction. And what we do is by other methods, we can keep track of what we call a, that changing of aisles is lateral shift. So if we can take account of that by counting how far we walked, how many minutes we walked or whatever, we can kind of... Uh, add that on and get back to where we were. Now, the other problem with this, you can imagine if you're walking through and the thing you're in, the aisle you're in is actually blocked. It doesn't go to the front of the store. You actually have to go out around this thing and get to the front of the store. Well, then you've added this, there's this obstacle. You've been following this and you can't even follow it back to the general direction. So you've got to go out around it Kind of like making three sides to a box and then go back. And again, by, by counting or being aware of things, you can have a better chance of doing it with this. But it's still going to get you into more of a general area of what you want.